an arduous 700 mile track through some of the most remote reaches of the Mojave Desert, a long forgotten overland route that was only recently revived by famed desert explorer Bill Creech. Sure, most folks know about the 140 mile Mojave Road, but the East Mojave Heritage Trail takes desert backcountry exploration to the extreme. Come along with the OTG crew as we battle bone rattling trails, explore old mines and ghost towns, scale a slot canyon that leads to a wondrous natural amphitheater, hike to massive dune fields, and discover backcountry cap sites without a soul in sight. This is the East Mojave Heritage Trail. The vast majority of the 700 plus mile East Mojave Heritage Trail lies within the Mojave National Preserve. The route consists of four unique segments, each with its own mailbox. If you want to get the most detailed GPX file available today, including over 200 discovery points in the approximate locations of the four mailboxes, then you'll want to visit overlandtrailguides.com. On this particular adventure, we'll explore various portions of segments one, two, and three. But before we get into our adventure, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. There's always a bit of nervous energy on the first day of any adventure. And while exiting the interstate and making our way towards the rendezvous point, the day one jitters were definitely in full effect. We met up with the group and briefed everybody on the itinerary for the day. This would consist of exploring segment one of the East Mojave Heritage Trail, visiting the historic Nipton Village, searching for the mailbox along segment one, and then heading to Carruthers Canyon and the New York Mountains for camp. Why don't we get into our adventure now? So we are at historic Nipton. This uh, little town, village, whatever you want to call it, was founded in 1905 when gold was found nearby. Uh, in 2017, it was for purchased for seven, five million dollars. They're trying to turn it into a cannabis tourist location. Doesn't look like that's panning out at the moment, but uh, we're gonna go look around here, at least where we are permitted to go. Well, Turns out the Green Tourist Resort didn't work out so well for the original proprietors as Nipton was sold to the Delta International Oil and Gas Company back in 2018. The property was listed for sale for the second time in five years in 2020, so we're not so sure what's going on with Nipton at this time, which is a real shame as it's a charming little man-made oasis in the middle of the desert. Hopefully someone with deep pockets comes along and purchases and reopens Nipton for the public to visit. Here's what you need to know about segment number one. It's filled with a ton of rocks and bumps and oh yeah, it's got a lot of really interesting geological formations as well. But hey, we've got to find mailbox number one. Well guys, we reached mailbox number one. It's not in the exact location as the GPX file that you would get from overlandtrailguides.com, but it's relatively close and it's right on the road. Pretty hard to miss. Let's go check it out. I'm probably gonna mute the volume here in the video because it's windy, but let's go look. Did you know there's a total of four mailboxes along the East Mojave Heritage Trail? One for each of the four segments. If you're so lucky to come across one, 
we definitely recommend taking the minute or so to sign the guest book, as it helps the National Park Service gauge the amount of traffic passing through a particular segment of the East Mojave Heritage Trail. Got a bit of a situation with Jack's trailer, I've been told. So we're going to check it out and see what the detail is. Let's see. I'll pull up more. Well, so we got a failure here. This guy fell off, so figuring out what we are gonna do at the moment. So, had to take off the tent. Probably smartest thing to do. Well guys, I'll tell you what. This first section, at least the section around the Castle Mountains, is extremely bumpy, not really technical, and uh, had our first breakage on the trail, Jack's trailer. We resolved it, as you saw, and now we're trying to make it to uh, Brothers Canyon in the New York Mountains. We'll see if we can make it. Uh, we're running out of daylight, and if we can keep going at a decent clip, which we were until this little rocky section, I think we'll be okay, but we might be arriving after dark. Let's see what happens. All right guys, so we're in the New York mountains right now. Everybody's getting ready to go. The big ticket item for day today is gonna to be hole in the wall over by Mitchell Caverns. Uh, we're not gonna to go to the caverns just because we don't have a reservation. It is the weekend before Thanksgiving. There's a decent amount of people out in certain areas like the New York mountains. These are the first people that we've seen all day today, but it should be a good one. I'm excited to see what we get into. Let's go do it. If you ever get the opportunity to camp at Carruthers Canyon, just do it. It's a shame I wasn't able to capture more video of this truly awesome camp, but my little guy Thomas was feeling a bit under the weather. So any spare time I had was spent comforting him. With its giant granite boulders, the New York mountains really is a majestic place to visit. So we just arrived at the Paiute Corral. I'll give you the guys all the lowdown on that. We're not gonna be going to Fort Paiute, uh, but basically Fort Paiute was created out here when the government was trying to control the old Mojave Road, then known as the old government road uh, as a trade route going through the Mojave Desert East-West Corridor. And uh, you know, this was the corral that I guess they kept their horses and other livestock at for the fort. So let's go check it out. Yeah. Look at that. That is awesome. What year is that? Late 80s. Late 80s. And that was the last time you were here. Yep. Wow. We were corrected. This is the 88 corral from what we've been told by a gentleman that used to work out here. I think it was the OX Ranch or something like that. He showed me a picture of him and his family on horses working this. So I'll have to go check the maps and see what the details. 
After returning home, I posted some questions about the Paiute Corral, aka the 88 Corral, to the East Mojave Heritage Trail Facebook group. Well, turns out the Exo Cattle Company did indeed erect the corral about 100 years ago, and despite being called the Paiute Corral, it has absolutely no relation to Fort Paiute on the other side of the mountain. The Lisa Ray Mine opened in 1891 and has been associated with the Signal Hill Mining District. During its heyday, it produced larger amounts of copper and lesser amounts of gold, silver, and lead. The kids and adults alike really enjoyed exploring the abandoned mine. Here's an interesting fact. Many of the open mine shafts at Lisa Ray and the surrounding area are capped with steel bars. While this certainly helps prevent perilous mishaps, the primary reason is to protect roosting bats that make their homes in the cave-like mine shafts. We got word that our friend Nick and his daughter had arrived and were waiting for us about five miles down trail at the old Goff schoolhouse. We hit the trail and headed for Goff's without any sort of expectations. I knew Goff's was the current home of the Mojave Desert Heritage and Cultural Association, but I had no idea how much recorded history, antiques, and relics Goff's had accumulated. All right guys, so we are at the Goff Schoolhouse, which is the headquarters for the Mojave Desert Heritage Cultural Association. I hope I got that right. Um, I'm gonna go check it out. Go sign in, even though it says sign in here. The guest book is inside. Let's go, Thomas. Not only is Goff's the current home of the MDHCA, but the old school house is a museum that features a plethora of history about the surrounding Mojave Desert. They've also got a great little gift shop featuring apparel and guidebooks for the Mojave Road, as well as the East Mojave Heritage Trail. As you probably noticed, there's an overwhelming amount of relics from the past at Goff's. Items and sites like the Mojave Bus, Mojave Road Mailbox Number 2, the Frog and Gnome Monuments have all been relocated to Goff's and that's barely scratching the surface of what's here. One could easily spend several hours at Goff's. If you're visiting the preserve, Goff's is a must visit and we encourage you to support the MDHCA with a donation, membership, or buying something from the gift shop. Alright guys, so I know I said we were going to shoot for hole in the wall today. You know, when you're doing a new track, it's sometimes hard to gauge mileage, how long it's going to take. Uh, you know, sometimes stuff happens with the group, things break and stuff like that. So we're not going to make it there today. I mean, we could, but then it's going to be dark and we're going to be searching for camp. So we're just going to look for camp right now while it's still daylight. And we're going to go to hole in the wall tomorrow. Should be a lot of fun. Well guys, got our camp, can't complain, fire's going, we got some tunes going, it's rather festive. I've got to say, this was one of my favorite nights on the trip. Claudia had set up a project for all the kids to work on and the group just really seemed to be clicking well. And what better way to finish off a cold, chilly night in the desert than with some good old butt coals. Thank you, Ed Colonna, for that one. It's a ritual from Ed Colonna. 
I need more oh, than you know, don't feel it. <laughs> so you gotta give him more, okay. Okay. That's a really good place. <laughs> All right, guys, we are camped out kind of by Mitchell Caverns. I'll give you the exact mine name. We're going to go check out a ghost town today before we go over to Hole in Wall. Before we do that, I think uh, I'm going to go climb to the top. We got Kiefer and Andreas up in front of us. They've already climbed to the top. I want to go check out the view and uh, show you guys what's up out here. Oh, that's good. I'll just kind of feel the silence, you know, it's just... Yeah. All right, guys, we are at the old Providence ghost town here. Looks like some old stone structures left. Uh, you have the Bonanza King mine just around the corner. In fact, we can see it. And then the Silver King mine. And I think there's some other mines that might be kind of spread out, but those are the two big ones. So let's go see what is over here. Kind of go out here into the bush. There's a bunch of old, additional old rock structures out here as well. So there's a number of these, what I'm assuming were like, uh, I don't know if they were miners' cabins made of rocks, and they're really crude. They essentially just take the rocks. There's no type of mortar or grout that goes in between them. You can see they're stuffing the small rocks in there at least on these kind of rock structures over here. Now over on the other side, they were definitely using like symmetrical bricks and plaster and stuff to put everything together. This was probably something at one time. Down there I can see a pile of rocks that looks like they're just everywhere up here. It's pretty crazy. After visiting Providence Ghost Town and the Bonanza King Mine, we made our way back down the rocky track and made a beeline for Hole in the Wall. Hole in the Wall was definitely one of the highlights of the trip as the kids absolutely love climbing the Rings Trail and exploring the various caves within the natural amphitheater as you'll soon see. All right, guys, we over it. We're at Hole in the Wall, uh, going to the overlook, and then we're gonna go do the ring section really quick. But this is really sweet stuff. The kids are loving it, climbing over everything, of course. That's pretty cool. Whoa. What's your drive time from uh from here to get home probably like four hours. Okay. Just crazy. Oh. Oh, really? 
bit more handholds. I didn't see you do that. Let's go do it. And then we're just going to turn around and go back. And just like that, we were back on another rocky track making our way over Fauché Pass. You've probably noticed we've been jumping around the various segments of the East Mojave Heritage Trail, which is pretty commonplace, especially when you don't have unlimited time to work with. My only regret about this part of the trail is that we didn't stop and explore the Vulcan Mine and its absolutely massive open pit. Maybe next time. But for now, we'd be making our way over to the Kelso Dunes on the other side of the pass. All right guys, we are going to Kelso Dunes. Gonna make a quick break here. No camping allowed, unfortunately, so not like Eureka Dunes. It just uh, pulls up kind of a gravel road. There's a fence, no camping, signs everywhere. So we'll respect that. Uh, we're just gonna go check it out and then we're gonna look for a campsite. First things first, there is camping at Kelso Dunes. You'll just need to drive a short ways down to the end of the road where there are several dispersed campsites available. The Kelso Dunes stand at over 600 feet tall and formed within the last 9,000 years. The dunes are also quite special as they're one of only seven dune fields in North America that produce booming. The National Park Service describes it as a deep, eerie rumbling sound that you can feel in your bones. As you can tell, there was nothing eerie about this particular visit to the dune fields. Well, the sun's getting low and that means we gotta find camp soon. We hit the pavement and headed for the cinder cone lava fields. Gaia GPS showed a number of campsites around the various cinder cones. Now we just needed to find one large enough for all of our rigs. All right guys, we are camping at the cinder cones, a couple miles from the lava tube, all that stuff off of the uh, Mojave Road. I'll give you the exact segment that this is on, but it does cross it for a little bit. We jumped up here, we thought it would be fun. Really nice, I think we're gonna climb to the top of this cinder cone tomorrow morning, maybe catch the sunrise. We'll see what we can do, but let's make some dinner. How is it? Thumbs up. Uh, right. We are doing butt coals again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's 
All right, guys, we're gonna give you a little morning report up on one of these cinder cones, show you what I'm going up here, and then we'll give you the details for the day. But right now, I'm just going up pumice to an established trail, and I think I'm gonna have to put the GoPro down. All right, let's go. So we camped in the cinder cone fields last night. We're gonna go check out the lava tube today probably drive by the lava teepee, uh, go to the Aiken cinder mine, I think also one of the other cinder mines as well, and then check out a bunch of old mining cabins if we make it that far today. Um, and I'll give you which segment we're on, I forget, we kind of been bouncing around here and everything, but uh, yesterday was a lot of fun and I think today is gonna be really good as well. You can see views, camps down behind me, it's probably Thomas making noise. But let's go get into another day here. All right guys, we are at the infamous lava tube. That is a place where a lot of people stop on the Mojave Road. Um, the East Mojave Heritage Trail does go through the cinder cone fields out here and it makes a stop. So we're gonna go check it out, should be fun. Hello, hello. Careful guys, don't go too close. Let's let's get somebody with a flashlight. Oh yeah, stretch it out. Hey, you could you could stand up. Walk. But come over here. <laughs> the parents have to like really go. Oh, okay. you're right about. Sign was perfect. I was right. Right. You're not measuring through the cover. Oh. There's the skylight. One of them. If you're ever up by the uh, Oregon border, check out Lava Beds National Monument. They have oh, like yeah, they have like two dozen of them, and like there's ones that like go way. Come on, wait for me. Oh, don't go down. So pretty cool. Not sure if you can see my face. Uh, definitely not as long or as deep as you might find at Lava Beds National Monument. Um, we have a video for that. Check that out too. But definitely worth checking out. There really is something otherworldly when driving through the cinder cone lava fields, and I'm not gonna lie, I could easily spend an entire week out here by myself, but for today, the show must go on. And what better way to keep the show rolling than by driving up and into one of the cinder cones? Well, a cinder cone mine at least. Mines like the Aiken Cinder Mine exploited the cinder cones for pumice, which is used as a binding material in asphalt. There really is so much neat stuff to explore in the Mojave that it's downright overwhelming. Guess that means we'll have to start thinking about our next trip, right? So we are at the Aiken Cinder Mine right now. This is pretty cool stuff. You can drive all over it. Still lots of old mining equipment here. You can see people are having fun driving around. Wow, conveyor belts even still have the belts on them. Check out these gears, guys. The springs, that thing shakes it. And then it goes down to another one.
All right, guys, we are at the Evening Star Mine, one of the discovery points on the East Mojave Heritage Trail. I just got a really cool, I'm, I'm assuming it's like a, a mill structure or something. There might be some uh, mine shafts down there, so just watch out. Here we go. Well guys, I think we may have saved the best camp for last. We were lucky enough to snag the campsite at one of the old mining cabins in the area and the sunset was absolutely stunning. The group toured the cabin and we were all impressed by the amount of TLC that the National Park Service and volunteers had poured into the cabin. If you're so lucky to stumble across one of these cabins, please keep the location secret and leave it better than you found it. We finished the night off playing frisbee and telling stories around the campfire. Till the next adventure, Godspeed my friends. Mm -hmm.